It's impossible to square it the other way. The other way it's impossible to square it. Look, here, first of all, as long as uh, there are troops who are in a position where uh, if we don't fund them, they're going to be hurt, I'm not going to cut off funding, period. That's what the other candidates said, too, but they changed their mind. Um, and number one. Number two, um, uh, you need 67 votes to end this war. Um, and all the rest is playing a game. Everybody uses this great phrase, speak truth to power. Well, the truth of the matter is you need 67 votes. Number three, you're in a situation where had we gone ahead and found 51 votes to send it back to the president, it would have delayed by uh, somewhere from a week to a month uh, what I fought very hard to get into that bill, these so-called MRAPs, these mine-resistant vehicles. I was able to uh, cajole, convince, and embarrass the Senate and the House into providing front-end funding for that so we'd get 7,774 of these built by the end of the year, 2,500 built by August. Two-thirds of all the deaths, two-thirds of all the injuries are directly related to the vehicles they're driving in. There is overwhelming evidence, it's uncontrovertible, that if we had these V-shaped vehicles, V-shaped hulls, you could save two-thirds of those injuries and two-thirds of their life. I find it absolutely unconscionable that I would delay to make a point a week to two to a month the construction of these vehicles, knowing that at the end of the day it has zero, zero, zero impact on being able to override the president's veto and end up with any other result than the one we got. And that's why I voted that way. What's the political fallout from that to you in a Democratic primary and caucus fight? You know me well enough, David. I knew the right political vote. <laughs> I didn't have any doubt about the right political vote. But I know it sounds, I don't know what it sounds like, but there's some things worth losing elections over for Christ, for gosh sakes. Um, and uh, I don't know, I could not remotely in good conscience vote to do that. And uh, I quite frankly anticipated based on some of the um, advice from some of the smarter political uh, operatives in the party who are working with me, I anticipated it's going to be a rough weekend here in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Iowa. Um, so we started off in Council Bluffs. I guess I've done, we'll get you the exact schedule, but you may have it already. I think we've done 10 or 12 town meetings so far. And they've been really well attended. I mean, you know, at the University of Iowa, a couple hundred people. Uh, you know, Mike Groundsville did an event at the Armory for me. Uh, there were, I don't know, 75, 100 people, house parties between 50 and 100 people. And guess what? To my surprise, um, nothing. Nothing. Uh, question, when I give them the answer, I'm getting standing ovations.